Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, some of our regular viewers, that would be Joe and Dave from South End, have complained that they're suffering from election fatigue. Well, not everybody is, you know. Over two million people have registered to vote since Theresa May called this election, with registrations coming at a faster rate than before the Brexit referendum. This election will, after all, determine the future of our country, of our security, our economy, our public services, and looming above it all, what Britain might look like post-Brexit. But what role the media in all this? Have the broadcasters, the newspapers covered the issues properly while giving all those who aspire to be prime minister an even and fair shake? Here's the artist, writer and social entrepreneur Akala with his take of the week. Until last week, Virtually the entire mainstream media predicted a landslide victory for the Conservatives and had written off Jeremy Corbyn as totally unelectable. But the Labour leader is outside the elitist bubble. He speaks to many of my generation that came of age during the Iraq war, a period of lies by media and government. We've often been written off as apolitical and ignored, but because of the policies and campaigns surrounding Jeremy Corbyn, many people like me will be voting for the first time. The war's bullshit, it's all bullshit. Corbyn has been subjected to many personal attacks in the media, particularly in the wake of the Manchester bombing, blasted as a shameless apologist for the world's men of evil. But his recognition that the Iraq war has helped to spread terrorism merely echoes the analysis of the intelligence services and even some Tories. But the media lies have not fooled my peers. In fact, they have probably boosted his credibility. All of what they feed us in the news, it is bullshit. Plus what they teach us in the schools, it is bullshit. The war is bullshit, it's all bullshit. Similarly, the failure of journalists to properly probe the Prime Minister about Britain's relationship with Saudi Arabia, even as they kill civilians in Yemen with bombs sold to them by British companies, or about the proposed dismantling of the NHS, has only served to confirm in many people's minds that the media is indeed protecting the elite. But why is this surprising? A hugely disproportionate amount of senior figures within the British media literally went to the same private schools and universities as our senior politicians. Can they truly represent the radically divergent worldviews that exist within Britain? Much less the five billionaires that own an estimated 80% of the British media. Last year, a study ranked the British media as the most right wing of the major countries in Europe. Is it really then any surprise that social policies that are considered entirely normal on much of the continent are portrayed as left-wing lunacy here. No expense spared by the production team there, <laughs> and as if by magic, Akala is here now. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Now, if the media is so overwhelmingly biased against Mr. Corbyn, why is he having such a good campaign? Um, partly because Theresa May has proved completely inept. She's called a snap election. She's, her campaign's not been very effective. It's been all over the place. There's been a large social media presence uh, with Corbyn's campaign. And of course, as the Labour Party has started to gain momentum, the media's had to take him a little bit more seriously. But if we just remember three, four weeks ago, that kind of tone of serious opposition wasn't there at all. And it was this uh, repeated nebulous phrase of unelectable, whatever but, that means. But many in the Labour Party thought that as well. If, if, if the media is full of Tory stooges, why would the polls narrow? Because people have seen the campaign unfold, as I said, and they've seen, mm. on, on the one hand, a campaign that's quite inept. They've seen a manifesto come out that's been written off as kind of uh, Marxist nonsense, which, of course, anyone who's read Marx and Lenin would know this is not even close to being a Marxist manifesto. It contains many policies, as I alluded to in the film, that are absolutely normal in some of the wealthiest countries in the world. And then they've seen another uh, manifesto come out that's completely mm. uncosted. They've seen... Uh, right, and it's the media that's told them it's un uncosted. So. 100%. Uh, so I, I don't quite understand why the media has been so biased. It's the media has reported a lot of how bad Mrs May's campaign has been. The media has reported that Mr Corbyn's having a much better campaign than most people expected. I suspect I even know. Mr Corbyn himself. So if you add all that to, together, I would have thought the media, by and large, is doing its job. 
And well, I, I don't know if I really accept that. I think, of course, the media uh, ha has had to take the candidate more seriously as the obvious trends uh, have changed. And I would argue that it's people who've organised and shown their support and uh, record youth uh, registration in voting that has come out. And that has forced a kind of change in tone and uh, an attempt to treat this election some way seriously. Uh, has the media been overwhelmingly biased against Mr Corbyn? I think that um, he has faced some tough questions in the early period and Theresa May's had some tougher questions in the later period. It's tough because if you think of David Cameron or George Osborne um, when they were Prime Minister and Chancellor or Theresa May, do they face the kind of questions Jeremy gets asked about what he was doing 20, 30, 35 years ago? The counter-argument is that that goes to questions of political judgment and character mm. in terms of the relationships he had and the people he, he um, dealt with. I guess my argument with Carla goes comes back to, to this. One of the great strengths of our society is that we have an independent BBC, which isn't owned by billionaires, and actually is, is trusted because it's always been objective and tough. I think the BBC has been tough on both sides in this election campaign. Quite a lot of Jeremy Corbyn's supporters think the BBC is part of the elite establishment, but um, I'm not sure that's right. I mean, do you draw a distinction between the broadcasters and the newspapers? Um, I think the tone of the newspapers has definitely, definitely been much worse. But again, you, you, make, you make a point about Corbyn facing tough questions about 34 years ago. I made a point in the film which still hasn't been addressed. Why the Prime Minister is not facing tough questions about our relationship with a country that today stands widely accused of being a funder of terrorism today. And we'll see how it pans out in the next week. But, you know, the article picked up in the Daily Mail by Peter Oborn broke that suggesting that the uh, Manchester terrorist was not only... Uh, allowed but facilitated in travelling to Libya to mm. presumably kill people and help overthrow Gaddafi and then let back in the country. So that Occurred. issue has been raised by the Daily Mail? It's been raised by the Daily about Mail. About Mrs May? 100% and I take that point. Will the Prime Minister be grilled about that in the same manner in but which Jeremy Corbyn what, has been grilled about the IRA question? What, what's wrong with grilling the Abs Labour leader nothing. about the IRA? Absolutely nothing. There isn't? Absolutely nothing. I'm just asking right now in 2017 we have long-standing, multi-billion trade relationships with a country that stands widely accused of terrorism now, today, not 34 years ago. And I'm not seeing the same tone of questioning being taken about something that is happening today. So I'm not suggesting it's, you know, completely disparate. I'm suggesting there's, a, there's subtle differences that in the end add up to massive differences. When a former politician gets the cover of the Evening Standard to say, Comrade Corbyn fly, flies the red flag, that's adjectives. That's not critique of policy. It's clearly not a Marxist manifesto. He's been quite tough not on Theresa May as well, then. 100%. <laughs> I mean, I think the Evening Standard has not exactly been a cheerleader for the Prime Minister. No, no, I, I, I take the point. Uh, maybe the newspapers just don't matter as much anymore. I think they matter slightly less, it's true. I, mean, I think one of, one of the areas where I disagree, I, mean, I, I, I think you've made some very good points, actually, but is that the media is not a monolith. And, and nobody is forced to buy or to consume either uh, newspapers or any particular type of media. And it's also the case that there have been alternatives. And, and on the left, there are sites like uh, the Canary and Squat Box and so on, uh, which, you know, whatever I might think of them, undeniably have a following. So I think there's a greater degree of pluralism there. And it's clearly the case that amongst some young voters, there's an enthusiasm for Corbyn that's reflected in new media and perhaps less so in the mainstream media. But I do think, and, and you're, you've been, uh, I think, generous enough to acknowledge this, that there are some tough questions that Jeremy um, has to face. And you know, if you attend uh, a, a, a meeting and call for a minute's silence for the IRA and for terrorists who've been killed, that is a big question. Imagine if Theresa May had called for a minute's silence for Well, you mean like BNP David Cameron people. going to King Abdullah's funeral? Well, there's a big difference between... King Abdullah and the not, IRA. Not, not if, and imagine, not if. imagine if a British political figure bidding to be prime minister had had sought to honour the fascists of the BNP. But you're, but you're flogging a dead horse because I've admitted that it's no, legitimate I'm not, for him to face I'm talking about the dead people whom the IRA no. killed. What? No, that's and not, the point is, no. the IRA were an organisation but, but run on the basis of killing innocents and putting British soldiers in the line of fire. And Jeremy Corbyn wants to run this country wants to lead our armed forces, and he and dishonoured them and their memory by calling for a minute's right. silence let, let, for terrorist killers. As back. we speak right now, a story has broken 
which I want to see in the next week before Thursday if the Prime Minister is going to be asked the tough questions about possible collaboration between the intelligence services and known terrorist sympathisers who've gone to foreign countries to kill people, who've been let back in Britain and blown up a pop concert and killed 22 well, people. What's the evidence for that? No, I'm just saying that's the story that's broke, so the Prime Minister should be asked the tough questions. But it's that's quite hard to ask tough questions if you have... I mean, I wouldn't ask a, a tough question if I didn't have the evidence to back it well, up. Well, it's been published. I in, can't just fly a, a question. 100%, but many media outlets have carried it. It's yeah, but a, without evidence. Well, then they, they should be sued for libel, should they not? Publish in such a sensitive I don't think, story. I don't think the security services are going to sell, sue the Daily Mail for libel. It's not only the Daily Mail. Mm. Other platforms have, have carried it. I'm just saying these are tough questions that the Prime Minister also has to be asked. And that, uh, that we have a relationship with Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia stands, stands widely accused of supporting terrorism is not, is not disputed. Is there any evidence that young people are going to come riding to Mr Corbyn in huge numbers? Well, the, um, the YouGov organisation, the Times newspaper, have taken quite a big punt on the idea that they but, might with that poll, because clearly the difference between the YouGov poll and ICM, the other pollsters, is the other pollsters are saying, if you didn't vote in the last election or, or in the referendum last year, when we're going to assume in the end you won't turn out, whereas, um, whereas YouGov's taking a punt on greater turnout. We know from the numbers that if young people under 30 came out in large numbers, mm. that would be a big swing to, to Labour. That would help Labour. And that easy. is the big... It, it's a big uh, uh, unknown for this general election. I know you hope it happens, but what is the evidence that it will happen, do you think? Because um, we've, I mean, I have to say, I've been here many times before. 100%. I'm, I'm not sure, and I'm still, I'm still dubious, mm. and I, I still am aware that we're quite a conservative country. I'm not myself even particularly a Labour supporter. My mm. politics are probably closer to the Green Party. I've never mm. voted before, as I said in the film. Are you going to vote this time? I am going to vote this time because I think that there is enough of a significant difference between this current leadership of the Labour Party and the Tories. Mm. But in um, the last election, you'd have voted Green, not Labour. It, yeah, if I had a vote, I would have voted Green. I mean, the, camp, the, the media coverage may or may not be biased uh, in the past four or five weeks, but it's done one thing, this campaign, and it's the media that's largely shown it. It's rumbled Theresa May, hasn't it? It's shown her up to be a pretty sec on the front second page. division politician. Well, uh, considering that I stood in an election against Theresa May and she buried me by a landslide, I think I have to acknowledge that that would make me uh, probably division. a Vauxhall conference level well, politician. I don't by think your we comparison. have that anymore, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 let's stick with third division. There wasn't actually a vote, Michael. There well, wasn't no, actually no, a vote. It no, was there, on, there on wasn't the, a vote amongst the members. I mean, has, no, no, there been, I, has, there been a, has there been a worse got... Tory campaign in living memory? Yes, my one for the leadership. No, election campaign. No, general, general election campaign. Well, Has there been I, a worse election campaign for the Tories in living memory? Is it worse? Well, I think the, the critical thing, Andrew, 87? is that you cannot judge a campaign until the end result. There were all sorts of people who criticised the Leave campaign, for example, and actually it ended up winning. Um, victory, in the end, will be the confirmation of how well or badly this campaign's been run. And Ed makes the point that the 1987 campaign uh, of the Conservatives had its moments which were portrayed in the media as wobbles. It ended up in a Conservative landslide. Theresa May will increase her majority. And, and will victory for Theresa May in this election prove to be as pyrrhic as victory in the Leave campaign was for you? Uh, <laughs> I don't think quite it was pyrrhic. I mean, it's I, I think question. It's, it's a very good question. Um, uh, but I don't think it was pyrrhic in the sense that uh, even though it, the, the, uh, the outworkings led to me no longer being in government, I'm glad that Britain's leaving the European Union. You'll be yeah. back uh, in 10 days' time. I, I know. <laughs> You'll be back in 10 together. days' time. See how they stick uh, different parties, they you stick to, together. Uh, do you think not so badly of the media after tonight? Um, it's not even necessarily that I think terribly of the media in the sense that I don't believe complete objectivity is even philosophically no, possible. That's why you if, want a diversity. Right, right. If I ran a news channel, even if I didn't mean for it to, it would naturally reflect sure, some, of my, you choose the agenda some of my passion. So Precisely. So if you have, which was the point I tried to make in the film, similarly educated people from similar backgrounds running all of the main institutions, even if they don't intend it, mm -hmm. the outcome can often be I, well, perceived would, to me. We, like we haven't got time. I think but, that's one of your strongest points. Would you... It, Exclude this week from your criticisms. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I have to watch a few more episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we got one. Mr. Corbyn's got one more voter, and we've got one more viewer. Cool. We like it. Thank you very much Thank for you. being with us. Thank you. I've been getting away with it.